if you face the situation whatever situation you are going through and you have many persecution at the same time you should have the courage and you should trust in the lord and do not give up anything or deny your faith trust in the lord and he will sustain you he will give you the peace and comfort and encouragement and you will be i mean surviving all these problems and god's presence is with you so he was writing from the the, the, the lonely place he was writing from the island of patmos and writing this to these people and that shows the intimacy and the concern of apostle john towards the churches you know that is the intimacy and concern towards the apostle john that is that was very important you know that much intimacy was there and that much he was close to those people because he is the person already i mean uh, he, he have been there and he have visited many times those churches and uh, he is having a close relationship with the, the people those who are in in those churches so that's the reason he is i mean with, with a burden he is writing to those people that i mean you must be very firm in faith i mean so the main purpose of these letters was to strengthen them to face the challenges and be aware about the future hope and blessings of a believer and he was trying to tell them that you have a future hope you have a future hope so the purpose is to tell them okay i just want to strengthen you and be strong in faith and you can face the challenges and also you have a future hope for for every believer even though you are going to through this uh, i mean situation so because john was writing this letter around you know, 96 ad so this letter was written in 96 ad and by that time almost all the uh, first generation uh, christians have already died so john was almost 89 years old man when he was writing this letter so he is writing this letter around 96 ad 96 ad at the same time that we have seen already in the in the in the date of the writing date of the book so uh and by that time what happened almost all the first generation christians have already died and john was almost 89 years old man when he was writing this letter but the, the problem here is the second and third generation christian were facing two kinds of struggles in those days the second and third generation christians were facing two kinds of struggles because the already the first generation people are gone and the apostles almost the apostles also gone only apostle john is living there so in that situation we have to understand the second generation second generation of the christians and the third generation of the christians they were having many doubts and they were having many, many confusions and uh, i mean they were many i mean false teachings also so mainly there were two kinds of struggles the first one two kinds of struggles you know uh, i'll be showing this i mean uh, slides there and I, i believe it's very clear for you and uh, you know there are there are many uh, two kinds of i mean struggles the first one is the persecution from the outside the persecution from outside so you can note it down or at least the points so that uh, i mean later you can go through that i mean portions okay so the first one is the persecution from outside two struggles are there mainly the first one is the persecution from outside that means from roman emperors the persecution from outside is from roman emperors and the secondly the struggle of false teaching from inside the church the struggle of false teaching from inside the church inside the church that means satan was trying to attack and defeat the churches you know even in the first century itself even in the first century itself it happened even in the time of apostles the same thing happened satan was trying his level was to attack the christians and the churches and defeat them okay so so these are the reasons of this letter these are the reasons of this letter so i just want to i mean i mean close that point there and now we will come to the next uh, i mean uh, next uh, point that is why 
he chose only seven churches why he chose only seven churches that means why god concentrate only these seven churches in asia minor the heading is like that why he chose only seven churches or why god concentrate only these seven churches what was the reason the, uh, of uh, i mean choosing only seven churches of asia minor and I'll, I'll i'll explain all those things with you uh, this uh, evening uh, there were many churches in uh, different regions you know not only these seven churches there are there are many churches in uh, in in this asia minor or that region so apostles already uh, uh, planted uh, many churches in europe also in asia also in africa also you now in different places you know these apostles were uh, just i mean dispersed and they went to uh, different places and countries and they were uh, uh, spreading the gospel in different places especially in europe and in asia and in africa in in many other places but why god chose only only seven churches and why god is i mean giving the messages to the seven churches in asia minor or why john is writing only for the seven churches there are many reasons for that there are many reasons for that so we will go through that the first reason the first we have to think about that the history and the geography the history and the geography if you are not able to uh, i mean write all the points but you can you can just i mean write down the main points and the sub points that will be coming there in the slide in the screen okay so the first thing they have to we have to think about the history and the geography of the of that place or of that asia minor so to understand the reason of this question or the reason of only choosing seven churches we have to go through the geographical structure and the history of those days is important it is very important you know the geographical structure of that place or the region or that minor and the history of that place is very important so that is the first one history and geography okay the, the other one is fertility fertility okay what do you mean by fertility you know uh, the 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 uh, what is that in malayalam pala pala pushtamaya stana pala pushtamaya stana fruitful aitla stana okay fertility the asia minor of those time is i mean known as the known as the western turkey today you know those days it is known as the asia minor but now it is uh, western turkey western turkey now and this place was a fertile land land on those days this place was a fertile land on those days and it was a greenery land and there was some of the famous rivers in that area so okay uh, these rivers are making uh, the places just like a fertility land you know there were many famous rivers in in asia minor uh, uh, rivers like uh, uh, the river of i mean uh, mentor the river of mentor and the river of castor the river of castor and river of hermus okay these are the three main uh, rivers of that asia minor uh, in those days okay because of that i mean a uh, 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 reason because of that rivers that place and that area was very fertile land okay the river of mentor and the river of castor and the river of hermus amen so then next to port the next one is the shipping ports the shipping ports the shipping ports So, you know this place was a coastal area the asia minor or these places these seven churches were placed in different places that was a coastal area and it was near the sea also it was near the sea also so there were many important shipping ports shipping ports like 
uh, I'll give you, I mean, three of the shipping ports that is there in, uh, it's, it's like, uh, I mean, okay, Melita, uh, the, the shipping ports, number one, Melita, and the Ephesus, and Smyrna. Melita, and Ephesus, and Smyrna. These are the three shipping ports in, in that area, in that Asia Minor. The next one is, next one is road transportation road transportation now this point is very important for the reason that why god was concentrating that seven churches road transportation these areas were well developed for road transport transportation in those days an asia minor was a junction of connecting europe and africa Asia Minor was the junction of connecting Europe and Africa. Now I'm speaking about the history, okay, the historical things and the geographical things of that area. You know, these are not these things are not written in in in, in Bible. Okay, so we'll be going through the Bible later. But now I'm just speaking about the historical things and the geographical things. No, I was just I mean telling you that Asia Minor was a junction of connecting Europe and Africa. And transportation was so easy because of the road development. You know, because of this reason, because of the development of the road, you know, uh, uh, it, the transportation was very easy. Okay, for uh, for example, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I'll give you one example from from India. When we purchase a house, uh, when we purchase a house, you know, the important thing that we ask, what would be the important thing? when we purchase a house in, in India, especially in Kerala. Is that the amount? And what, what would be the mortgage or something? No. Why are you under? Why are you under? Very good. And the money was So we used to think, you know, we used to ask a question. The first question will be, Okay, is there a is there a road to reach that house? I mean, if there is no road, you don't want the house. That's very clear, you know. Anamani's house is very near to our house, and I know that uh, I mean <laughs> their their house is having a road to reach there. Okay, without a road, we won't be able to buy a house. So the same thing was happening in that area also, in in that Asia Minor also. You know, here there is no uh, there is no problem for I mean, uh, for, for reaching to the to those places because there is there is a great development in uh, in that area about the road and road transportation transportation. Okay, so uh, in 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 America uh, there is no problem at all. Okay, here there is no house without a proper road. Is it right? Here there is no house without a proper road. So we will not understand that the people from this area they will not understand what is the meaning of this. But in India. We know that that is the end. And the next point is invasions and business. Invasions and business. Invasions and business. Okay. So the first, I mean, it's the point you can write Persians. We are just, I mean, I mean, maybe a few seconds we are thinking about Persians, Persians. You know, because of these reasons, the Persians conquered the place and developed many roads for the purpose of business. You know, the Persians were having the, the, the purpose of business. So that is the one reason that those people conquered this place, the Asia Minor, or that, I mean, Western Turkey, and the place, and they were trying to develop many roads for the purpose of business. Okay, that is the first in, in invasions and everything. Okay, and secondly, secondly, the invasion of coins, the invasion of coins, the invasion of coins. Invasions of coin means, you know, 
uh, you know, Lydia, the, the, the place called Lydia was one of the countries of Asia Minor. And the king, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Croesus, the king of Lydia, invented the, the, the coins of silver and gold. Okay, so that is the first coin in the world. You know, uh, uh, Croesus is the, the is the first king of Lydia. Is the is the king of Lydia. Uh, he invented the the coins of silver and gold. So that also made that place important. And I mean, uh, that would be the one reason that. The, the, that area was, I mean, developing, or that country was developing, or that region was developing, okay, a lot. And, sec and uh, next one, the Greeks, the Greeks. Greeks. You know, during this time, the Greeks came and captured this place for their business purpose. Now, there are many people coming, inside and reaching there because of the road transportation those people were coming there and they were i mean making their arrangements and they were i mean having a purpose of business greek people also they came there and they captured this place and for their own business portions also came and now greeks also came and now romans it's the next one next to group romans you know what happened the roman government also came there and they established the law and order. The Roman government came there and captured that place and established the law and order. Okay, let me tell you what is the re what what is the reason that I am saying all these things? Because you know, uh, uh, Apostle John is writing the letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. The reason is, you know, those places were well developed in different areas. It was a fertile land and. A, and there was a there was a road transportation and in every area i mean everything was developing so that was the one reason that these people from different countries the abroad they reached there then they were just i mean capturing this place and they were doing their business and that is that the business was the purpose of i mean invasion of those people even persians and greeks and romans okay so uh, that was the the last uh, this one government and romans okay now we will uh, go to the uh, next point the religious influence so religious influence also is a is a is a, is, a, is, the, is the main thing we are thinking about why john or god selected these seven churches only even though there were many churches in different areas even though there were many churches in different places the reason we are thinking about now the religious influence was one of the reason for that okay first thing the christianity the christianity the religious how the religious influences uh, that place first one is the christianity you know in in fourth century the emperor constantine the emperor constantine officially established the christianity in that area in asia minor in fourth century, the emperor Constantine officially established the Christianity in that area. So first, the Christianity was there in fourth century. Then, then, Islam, Islam, Islam came into that place in fourteenth century. Fourteenth century. How Islam came? Because the Turks, Turks, you know, what, what do you call Turkey, Turkey girl, okay? So the Turks came there and they established their, I mean, Islam religion in that, I mean, uh, Asia Minor. So in, in this particular area, okay? The Islam came through the Turks, okay? Or Turkey girl, okay? Then, then only the Christian churches disappeared, okay? So in this time, when the Islam came and captured that place, then Christians, the Christian churches were disappeared from that place. Okay, so that is the situation. You know, from the 14th century, there was no Christian churches, and there is no history says that there is no Christian churches because everything was defeated and everything was demolished from that area. Okay, even in the first century, there were many churches in, in Asia Minor, 
but now it says history says that again after the romans the islam came the turkey came there and now it is there is no they cannot find any christian churches in in that area it says like that now next one next uh, uh, main point is the temples and the pagan worship centers temples and the pagan worship centers <clears throat> Temples and pagan worship center. You know why I'm saying this? We have to know the importance of that place. We have to know the importance of the place where the, the churches are placed or the where the churches are established. Okay, the, the importance in, in in different ways, historically, geographically, and politically, and religiously in every realms of their life. Okay, so you know, there are many famous temples and worship places in in Asia Minor in these places. There were many famous temples and worship places in that place. For example, the temple of goddess Diana. The temple of goddess Diana. That's in that's in 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 uh, not in the history. That is in the Bible. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to that point. The temple of goddess Diana. Let us read uh, uh, Acts chapter. 19 verse 1 acts chapter 19 verse 1 it says it happened that while apollos was at corinth paul passed through the upper country and came to ephesus came to ephesus and found some disciples amen so again, again, in verse 10, it says that this took place for two years so that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Okay, so we, we are thinking about, I mean, is there the temples or the pagan worship in, 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 in these places, especially in, in Ephesus, in Ephesus? Now, we are going to that point because we have to think about why and how Apostle Paul was visiting that place. You know, in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 says, Paul reached in Ephesus and he was preaching the gospel in Ephesus. In Ephesus. And in verse 10, we read, many Jews and Greeks from, uh, from Asia. Is that right? From Asia. This took place for two years so that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Okay, so many Jews and Greeks from that area, from Asia Minor, believed in Jesus Christ. And now we come to the 13, verse 13, verse 13. It says, but also some of the Jewish exorcists, that means the scrapped people, okay, who went from place to place, attempting to name our those who had the evil spirits and the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. So what that, that verse says, verse 13 says, there were many witchcraft people in Ephesus. There were many witchcraft people in Ephesus. And now we come to the verse 27. Verse 27 says, For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver strings of Athemis, was bringing no little business to the craftsmen. Okay. So what says that verse 24 says that there were the temple of goddesses Diana or goddesses Artemis. Okay, both are same. Okay, uh, Diana uh, uh, Devi, Alangil, Artemis Devi, and the two are the same. So there were temple of goddesses Diana and goddesses. That means uh, uh, goddesses Diana or goddesses Artemis. Artemis. Okay. Now we will come to the 28th verse, verse 28. When they heard this and were filled with rage, they began crying out, saying, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Okay, what is that? Great is the goddesses Diana or the Ephesians, or the great is the Artemis of the Ephesians. What I say. Okay, so these verses we can understand. You know, there were many pagan worship centers. There were many pagan worship centers, even though 
these people, these, the church believers were going through many difficult situation and the persecution. So these are the main things we can understand. And when you go to Revelation chapter, I mean, uh, 2 verse 13 also, Revelation chapter 2 verse 13, there also we can see one of the things from that place, you know, uh, chapter 2 verse 13 says like this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Okay, so here in verse, I mean, chapter 2, verse 13, Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, it says that the place called Pergamum. Okay, so this, this I mean, from from uh, 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 chapter 2, verses 12 uh, following, we are reading about the messages sent to the church at Pergamon. The messages sent to the church at Pergamon. Okay, so the place, it, it, is, it is written there, the place called Pergamon, where the seat of Satan is in Asia Minor. Okay, so it says, you know, a seat, the seat of Satan was in that area in 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 the place called Pergamum. So the church in Pergamum is called as the Pergamum Church. Okay. So even Bible says even even when John Apostle John is writing this letter, he says that there is the seat of Satan. There is a seat of Satan. So we have to think about something that you know, wherever we wherever we live or wherever we reside, we have to understand everywhere there is a there is a seat of Satan. You know. Uh, Satan is working hard to, to defeat the Christianity, to defeat the, the Christian people, you know. So we have to think about, you know, in every every area there is an authority, there is an authority from a satanic, I mean, control of satanic power. So we have to fight against that and we have to pray for the people of God, we have to pray for all the people. Because when you read this verse, Revelation chapter 2 verse 13, it says that even, even, even Satan also was targeting that place. Even Satan also was targeting that place. Not only Persians, not only Greek people, not only Roman people, even Satan also was targeting that place and he was trying to make his seat in Pergamon. Okay, listen. So these, uh, these, I mean, places of seven churches okay, mentioned in book of Revelation was politically, historically, Financially and religiously very important. It is very important. Okay, one reason you can you can think about that. You know why God or why John is writing the letters to these seven churches. The reason I've been explaining all these things. The reason one, politically, second, historically, third, financially and religiously, this place was important. And many people were just trying to capture this place and they were just and trying to attack this place and they were trying to defeat the Christianity of that area. So God was thinking, God was thinking, if these churches can stand firm in faith, even in this situation, the other churches also will be able to survive. Okay, we got it. You know, God was just thinking, and even John also was maybe thinking, okay, if these churches, if these seven churches, even though in the, in the midst of the persecution, even though in this situation, I mean, if they are standing poor because of these letters, because of these letters, because of the content of these letters, if those churches are standing firm, then the other churches in different areas also will be able to survive. That could be the reason that Apostle John was just reading or writing the letters to these people. So that is the reason that God was asking to Apostle John to come to Patmos, I mean, to come to Patmos, be there and write the letters and write the eschatology things through the visions and the dreams. I mean, so that's the reason that seven churches were, I mean, uh, 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 what is that again? Uh, a selector. Uh, to, to, to write the, uh, uh, the ledgers. Now, we will go to that map of, uh, uh, map of the seven churches in Asia Minor in the screen. Uh, you can show, okay. So that, uh, I mean, uh, map is there in the, in the screen. You see there, 
this is the map of uh, the seven churches in Asia Minor. Listen there, you know, in one side, the Patmos is there, you know, Patmos. Patmos. So the, the Patmos is away from these seven church areas. Okay, the first one, the Pergamon, then uh, Thetaira, then Sardis, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Ephesus, Laodicea. Laodicea. Okay, so these seven churches are there. So you can, this is the Asia Minor. The right side is the Asia Minor and top, and then Black Sea. Then the left side, you can see the Patmos, the island of Patmos, and Greece is there. Okay, and all those things. And this is the this is a small map. You can uh, I mean uh, get get a get a I mean small idea about I mean how the, the churches were in 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 that area. Okay. So now we will come to the next main point that is the specific futures of this book. The specific futures of this book. Maybe. By that point, we will conclude today's class. Mm -hmm. Specific features of this book. You know, without knowing all these things, we cannot go to the to the chapter one. So we have to know the background. We have to know the uh, uh, know the uh, the context of that book and the reason of that book. Then only we will go forward. So specific features of this book. Uh, first one is the structures of seven letters. The structures of seven letters. You know one thing, there are seven similarities in each letter. There are seven similarities in each letter. There are seven letters from Apostle John to the Asia Minor churches. Seven churches are there. Okay. So there are seven similarities in each letter. The first one is he is mentioning to whom it is written. To whom it is written. To whom it is written. That means who are the readers or who is the who is the audience? Secondly, who is writing? Who is writing? Who is writing? That means the, the addressing of the writer. Thirdly, appreciations. There are appreciations, appreciations uh, in all the all the messages of the churches. Appreciation for their good works. You know, Apostle John was appreciating those people, or all the church people, for their good work. Okay, you did this one. This is good. This is good. This is good. So he was appreciating that. Fourth one, criticism. Criticism. So I wonder why Apostle John was criticizing those people. You know, there's a reason. If there is no criticism, we will not have any any spiritual growth. So I think criticism is good for. The people to grow in spirit. So sometimes when we face through the criticism, no problem. We will we will face it and we will overcome it. That's very good. So even Apostle John also was criticizing those people. Okay, this is bad and you should not do that. You should not follow that. Does this criticism at the same time? Fifth one, advice. He was giving many advices to those people. Sixth one, appeal. That means he was requesting many things to them. That means you should not do this. I, I appeal and I request you. Hmm? I beseech you, brethren, you should not do that. And you should be very firm in faith. Seventhly, the seventh one, assurance of reward. The assurance of reward. He was speaking, you know, when you read a, a book of Revelation, the whole, chap whole chapters and also the, the, uh, uh, the, seven, the letters to the seven churches, uh, he was many, many times he was I mean, sharing about the assurance of the reward 
that the believer is having, Dr. Steele is having. Okay. The second, the main feature, second main feature is three views on seven letters. Three views on seven letters. I'm showing all these points in the slide because it is very easy for you to note it down. Okay. First one, you know, think about there are mainly three views on seven letters. Okay. Some people say that this is the reason or this this is my view about the seven letters. And the second second group of people says, okay, this is my view. And the third group is saying this is our view. So we are just looking into that three views. For example, whatever we take or whatever we speak, there will be many people to share their own views. Okay, for example, if I ask you one question now, you all will have your own views on that. Okay, when I was asking a question about what you know about Apostle John or the author of the book of Revelation, Divya was sharing that and the other person will share something else and the other person will share something else. So all those people were, and even today also, all the biblical scholars and the theologians, they are having many kinds of views on these things, the seven letters. The first one is, these letters were written only for the seven local churches. These letters were written only for the seven local churches in Asia Minor. <clears throat> That means those people, a group of people or group of scholars says that, okay, only, only for that seven churches this was written. These letters, were the, maybe the book of Revelation or the let, seven letters are written. And this is not applicable for us, okay, in this modern realm or uh, for, for, this, for us, the people those who are living now, okay. That is the first view on that seven letters. Second one. The dispensational application. The dispensational application. Dispensational application. What do you mean by dispensational application? That is, you know, each letter includes the specific events happened in the in, in a period of time. Okay, each letters have a con content, and each letters have some of the events that is happening okay each letters concludes with the event something is happening there so the, the events happened in in a period of time from the first century till the rapture of the church from the first century till the rapture of the church in between this time in between these long years many things are happening so this group the second group is saying that this is a dispensational application. So they are dividing the, the church period into seven, se, what, what you can say, seven periods. Okay. For example, I'll tell you, okay, what happened in, in that specific period? What happened? What events are happening in that specific, I mean, event? So, and they say that, okay, this is only for, uh, the, okay, for example, Ephesus Church. Okay, that content or that message is for these people and this message is for those people, like the second, second one. You know, for example, I can, I can, I, I can give you some of the explanation about uh, uh, the, the, the seven churches. Number one, Ephesus. The first church is Ephesus. This view and this group says that it is the first century period Okay, the, 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 the events which happened in the first century period, the first century period, that means that is the apostolic time. The apostolic time. The apostolic time is known as the first century. First century. So all the apostles were there in, in that century. So that is called as the apostolic time. And that is the, and uh, these people say that the Ephesus, the content, the messages to the, I mean, uh, uh, to Ephesus, the church at Ephesus is. Uh, in the in during the time of the first century and second church is Smyrna. Smyrna, and that Smyrna church, uh, the, the the time period is 
AD 100 to AD 330. AD 100 to AD 330. And they say that is the time of severe persecution. That is the time of severe persecution. That means this is the time after the after the Apostle John. Okay, so that was the severe persecution time. That's the reason. Even before the severe persecution, John was writing the letter to those people because you must be very careful. You must be very, I mean, uh, 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 firm in faith. The third one, Pergamon, the Pergamon church. That is from AD 340 to AD 590. AD 340, 14 to AD 590. That is called the official church. So that, that time, it was a, just like an official church. That means officially the people were known, the leaders were known as the official officers and they were known as the apostle okay on the leaders of the church i am the leader of this church or something maybe something like uh, i mean president or secretary or something okay so uh, next one Taithaira. the church is Taithaira, and that is uh, from ad uh, 591 to ad uh, uh, one, i mean uh, thousand five hundred and seventy thousand uh, five hundred and seventy that is known as the the, the period of papal Papal period. Papal period means the, the, the church ruled by the Pope. The church ruled by the Pope. The church ruled by the Pope. And in those days, many false teachings were there. In those days, many false teachings were there. And the next one is serve this. Serve this. Serve this. It is AD. Uh, uh, 1518 to AD 1729, AD 1729. It, it is known as the formal church. It is known as the formal church. And sixth one is the Philadelphia. 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 Eddie thousand seven thirty to Eddie uh, nineteen hundred. Eddie nineteen hundred. It is there the slide, it's very easy to write. That is known as the missionary church. Missionary Church, 19th century. Okay, so that is one. Then the last one is the Laodicea. Laodicea. That is AD 2000 to the rapture. AD 2000 to the rapture. The speciality of this time that we are in the in the 21st century and Laodicea period starts from AD 2000 to the rapture of the church that is known as the apostate church. Apostate church means the time when the apostasy is happening or in this time many people will be going away from the real faith to the olden I mean, times and you know those people the apostasy when the apostasy is happening that is known as the apostate church the, the, the situation of the church the situation of the christian church today might be you can you can similar it is it is you can compare with the, the apostate church or the, the when you read the the messages or the letter content of the levodicia uh, maybe it, it shows that many people are going away from the faith at the same time many people are coming to the faith also. okay this is the third this this is a second. This is the second view about these seven letters. Okay. They say the second view is they say that okay, okay, or the messages or the content to one church letter is equal to that period only for that period. Okay, so that means 
the 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 the, uh, the 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 messages for the philadelphia church is not applicable for for us okay as we are living today okay it is not applicable for us this is okay. the third view the third view third view that is the global application the global application global application that means the messages in seven letters applicable to all the churches from first century ad to the rapture global application is the messages in seven letters applicable to all the churches from first century to the rapture and that's the third view and i think it is better to believe this view is the right view okay even for all the people globally all the people all over the world you know these seven letters seven letters is applicable you know there are many churches going through the persecution there are many churches growing at the same time there are many churches where there is apostasy and there are many churches where there is i mean the people are just i mean i mean uh, are fighting against the, the other people the believers are fighting against each other and their love is going down and they, they do not have the first love and all of those problems you know whatever we read in uh, the messages of the seven churches everything is happening all about the world even today also so we can take the third view as applicable for the global view and these messages in seven letters is applicable to all the churches from first century to the rapture so we have been discussing i mean something from the special or specific features of the book of hebrews I men by this i would like to conclude this session and this is 9 o'clock now I men so we will be continuing the same portion and we will be entering into the first chapter maybe in the next maybe upcoming class okay may god bless you all so anything to ask i know i know about the history and about the geography you don't know how to ask anything and when we go through the chapters and verses we'll be uh, uh having or clarifying all the doubts but if you have anything you can just Yeah. Hello. Otherwise, yeah.